Hi, Prabhu here. Today we will see about how to model a complex shape in Maya 2017 part 16. In this part we learned about this complex shape and we also learned about how to achieve this complex details using Photoshop. Stay tuned. If you are new to this YouTube channel, click red color subscribe button to subscribe this YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you never miss any updates of weekly 3 videos about Maya 2017, Arnold modeling, texturing and lighting. Ok, in this part we model this complex shape and also we learn about how to achieve this complex details utilizing Photoshop. Go to Maya. So first of all we need to set our project folder, it's really important because we need to unwrap and use bump map using Photoshop. So you definitely want to set the project folder, go to file and choose project window. So I will choose my new project. So I will choose my location as D drive, you choose wherever you want. I will rename my project as complex shape 16. So this is 16th part so I will keep as 16 and click accept. Ok now we successfully set our project folder. Go to create panel, polygon primitives, disable the interactive creation that means we, when we click on polyplane it will automatically create it in center of grid. Press R and scale big and give polyplane subdivision width and height to 2. So go to top view and press 4 in keyboard that means you able to see our wireframe mode you need to scale in z and also in x little bit so shift right click and choose insert edge loop option box here you need to choose multiple edge loop and give number of edge loop to 1 and close the settings you need to add one over here and also here so select this both edge press r and scale like this Select this both edge and scale a little bit like this. Select this both edge and scale a little bit like this. So select this both edge and scale really small. And press W, I want to move a little bit in Z. Now you need to add one more edges. So add one more edge loops between each and every edges and select this both edge and press R and scale in X so select this both and scale in with X and select this both and scale in X so like this so select this both and scale down so now you need to add to edge loop go to insert edge loop option box shift right click and choose insert edge loop option box and give number of edge loop to 2 choose multiple edge loop and give number of edge loop to 2 add 2 over here and also here now right click and choose object mode right click and choose vertex so select this two vertex and move a little bit like this you need to make it straight So you need to make this three vertex much straight as possible. It's really important. So on opposite side also. Now right click and choose object mode. Ok now select this edge of so select this two edge select this two edge and also in opposite side don't select in middle because we need to apply uh, details over here but not in center so we will select this two edge on both sides shift right click and choose bevel edge and give fraction amount to 0 0.25 now 
go to perspective and press 5 in keyboard that means you able to see our shaded mode right click and choose face mode so select this face and shift select this face and shift select this face and shift select this face shift right click and choose extrude face and i need to extrude in z like this now right click and choose object mode shift right click and choose insert edge loop option mode so i will reset my tool choose multiple edge loop and give number of edge loop to one and close the settings see here here we have a triangle to fix this one you need to add one more edge loop exactly in center that means you got one two three and four edge all quads you need to do on all other sides so now select this both edge on all uh, all faces so shift sorry you need to move in y to make it round shape right click and choose object mode so see here here you we have an in gone so that means one two three four and five edge so to clear this one go to top view shift right click and choose insert edge loop you need to add edge loop over here it will not flow on the side because we have in gones so you also add over here so here here Press 4 in keyboard that means you are able to see our wireframe mode. You need to add on all other sides. Now you need to connect using multi cut tool. Shift right click and choose multi cut tool. You need to connect over here and right click. Click on here, click on here, right click. Click on here, click on here, right click. okay so now how to fix this in gons you need to click on here you need to click exactly in center you need to click on this over here and right click so now you got one two three and four face and also we have one two three four edge so that means you got all quads you need to do on all other sides click on here click on here and end up with here click on here click on here and click on here click on here 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 and also here and right click now right click and choose vertex mode so i will select this both vertex and press r or select this one and press w i want to move a little bit like this so if you want to additional edge loops you need to add on here here so double click on this edge and press r and scale like this a little bit scale a little bit like this to make it round shape or right click and choose for text mode select this one and press w i want to adjust a little bit like this So if you want to add one more here, here, here and also here and press R and scale a little bit like this, like this to make it round shape. Double click on the sage and scale a little bit X. okay so now we got a perfect shape with perfect topology press 4 in keyboard so we press 5 in keyboard to see our shade and move now press 3 now you got this details over here so here we need to fix one thing so see here in our reference image it will be in curve over here and also you need to make this as a bended shape so don't bother about this because we use soft selection to achieve the shape now we need to make this rounded shape so go to maya go to top view and press 4 in keyboard so i didn't care about this side so i will select this face on opposite side and press delete 
so here you need to fix that one so I will select this both vertex and move a little bit to y sorry z so select this one and move up so select this one and move up so like this so select this one and move a little bit like this so now go to post perspective and press 5 in keyboard right click and choose object mode now press 3 in keyboard to smooth our object so select this vertex I want to move in Z to make it round shape. Right click and choose object mode. So now you got a perfect curve over here. Now go to top view. So in the object selector, check your pivot exactly in center or not. Press Ctrl D to duplicate and use K Z to minus. Don't change any values over here. You just place minus over here and press enter so that means you got an opposite side so press one in keyboard select this object and press one in keyboard select this both object shift right click and choose combine right click and choose vertex mode drag and select all the vertex in center shift right click and choose merge vertices now right click and choose object mode now press three in keyboard so now you got that bend shape over here so now go to perspective and right click and choose vertex mode so select the center vertex so listen carefully select the center vertex and press B in keyboard B means soft selection so see here the soft selection will be happen only on this region use B key hold the B key and use middle mouse button and click and drag to grow our soft selection so you need to grow until you reach the orange spot on this corner so you are able to see our orange spot now press w and move in y so like this so i will turn off my grid so press w and move in y so now you got an bended shape over here so now you are able to see our object will be bent so this is what we want right click and choose object mode now in the object selected go to modify and choose center pivot and and also turn on grid and move in y so like this so now we got a perfect bend over here in the object selected press 1 in keyboard to unsmooth our object go to top view right click and choose edge mode select the sage and shift double click on the sage and shift right click and choose extrude edge and press w i want to move a little bit in z and press r and scale like this now go to perspective i need to straighten up this curve so press R and you need to scale in Y to make it straight. Now go to top view, shift right click and choose extrude edge and press W. I want to move like this. So right click and choose vertex mode, select the smooth vertex and press R and scale a little bit in X. So here you need to make a round shape. So I will select this vertex and press W. I want to move in C, select this one and move in C, select this one and move in C. So you need to make this as, as a round shape. like this now you need to add one more edge loop shift right click and choose insert edge loop option box here you need to choose reset the tool 
and add one more edge loop over here now you need to merge this vertex right click and choose vertex mode select this vertex shift right click and choose merge vertices and choose target build tool you need to weld this vertex over here and weld this vertex over here so that means our mesh flow will be happen on this direction do same thing on here click and drag click and drag so now go to perspective here you need to do and shift right click and choose multi cut tool you need to click on here and click on here you need to end up like this to make a round shape So you need to make cut like this, right click and choose vertex mode, select this vertex. So I want to adjust this one using edge slide, go to modeling toolkit and choose and transform, sorry selection constraint, transform constraint to edge slide. So when the transform constraint to edge, you need to move this vertex like this to make a round shape now here we have an end goal so don't bother about that one right click and choose face mode so select this face and shift select this face and also you need to select the spaces so like this shift right click and choose extrude face and press W and move in Y so turn off the edge constraint and move in Y and also press R and scale a little bit in X and also in Z. Now right click and press W and also move down and press 3 in keyboard to smooth our object. So now we need to make an quad over here. So adding one more edge loop. Uh, use multi cut tool to connect like this so that means you got an quad over here so now we need to make some roundness for this edges so select this edge and select all this edge and press W and move in Y so I will select other edges and move in Y so to make it round shape so I will select this 3 edge and move in Y select this edge and move in Y now right click and choose object mode now press 3 in keyboard to smooth our object so now it's nice and clean with perfect topology now press 1 in keyboard now we need to make an something like this so you need to make some bow shape over here shift right click and choose insert edge loop option box here i need to choose multiple edge loop and give number of edge loop to 10 and click on here so that means it will add a 10 edge loop 
and each and every gaps you need to add three more edge loop shift right click and choose insert edge loop option box here I need to choose and three so each and every gap you need to add and three edge loops So now you need to make a round shape. So go to top view, right click and choose edge mode. So this is perfect. Double click on the edge of three over here and leave one and select other three and leave one, select other three and leave one, select other three, leave one, select other three leave one select other three select other three leave one select other three leave one select other three leave one and select other three so like this you need to leave one after three edges so each and every side so press R and scale in X to make a round shape like this now right click and choose edge mode again you only select this mid edge using shift And press R and scale in X to make a round shape. Now right click on choose object mode. Now go to perspective. Now press 3 in keyboard to smooth our object. Now we got a perfect shape. Okay, finally we need to make hole on here. So as we seen in our reference image. So as we do that, I will close my tool settings. So I will select the space over here here we need to make a hole so select the space um, here so like this so press one in keyboard to unsmooth our object so we need to select this one shift right click and choose extrude face and press R and scale and with like this and press delete in keyboard here you need to make a round shape right click and choose vertex mode select this vertex and go to modeling toolkit and turn on this transform constraint to edge slide and press W I want to move like this so select this vertex and move like this so you need to make a round shape over here Like this so do same thing on here so you need to keep this edge much close as possible now right click and choose object mode now press 3 in keyboard so now you got a perfect cut over here so now i turn off this each constraint to off so now we need some thickness for this object now press 1 in keyboard shift right click and choose extrude you need to extrude in z a little bit 
and press G again you need to extrude again and right click and choose object mode now press 3 in keyboard so it's nice and clean with perfect topology we got a perfect model so now we need to start an unwrapping okay before that I will go my top view and press 1 in keyboard to unsmooth our sorry press 3 in keyboard smooth our object and I will select this vertex over here and press W I want to move in Z so select like this and also in opposite side and move in Z so select this one and shift select this one and press R and scale a little bit like this so select this both and press R and scale a little bit like this and also select this one and press W I want to move like this now right click and choose object mode now go to perspective so now you able to see our object will be not in perfect so I will go my right side view and move exactly our object above the grid like this and also you need to contact this handle exactly in ground so I will click on this rotate X I need to rotate like this until it contacting so select this rotate X and use middle mouse button and click and drag until our object handle will be contacting your ground okay it's perfect I think so I will Q 0.05 or 0 0.3.0 so it's perfect now go to perspective now we need to unwrap this one go to top view and press 1 in keyboard go to UV and choose planar option box here I need to choose bounding box camera and turn on keep image with an height ratio and click project now right click and choose object mode now go to perspective right click and choose edge mode double click on the sage on center and shift double click on the sage exactly in center now go to UV and choose UV editor now you need to turn on this one to see our UV in color mode so after you selecting this edge you need to click on this one separate the UV along the selected edge sometimes it will be hidden over here so you need to expand this one and choose this one separate the UV along the selected edge now right click on perspective and choose UV mode and select UV select the top any UV over here now control right click and choose to shell and press W I want to move on the side so it will indicate intimate so with color code red and blue so blue is perfect red is reversed so if you have reverse object so you need to select this UV over here control right click and choose to shell after that you need to flip on this direction so flip along the UV direction U direction click on that one so that means it will be flip so right click and choose UV mode select all the UV and press R and scale a little bit like this and press W and move a little bit like this so keep in mind you need to keep your UV exactly in this white region because it will take UV snapshot along this white region don't keep outside over here so you need to keep exactly inside of this white region so when the UV selected go to polygons and choose UV snapshot so it will automatically go to your destination folder images you need to click on this one and rename this as object underscore UV and save so and choose size X and Y to 1024 pixels and give color value to red 
so that means our wireframe color will be happen in red so and choose image format to png and click ok so now you open your photoshop okay now you need to open your file go to file and choose open go to your destination folder in this case my d drive go to your destination folder in images you able to find your uv open that one so when the layer zero selected click on this lock button so that means you cannot able to move this wireframe in the layer zero selected create new layer so and drag this layer one all the way to bottom so that means your layer one will be come down below this layer zero so in the layer one selected take paint bucket tool and choose and pure black color so that means your all values must be in zero and click ok because it's an bump map so i will choose pure black and fill on layer one when the layer one selected click lock button so that means you cannot able to move so here you need to apply and patterns on this side this region so you will download in internet or i will provide the link below the description box please download this pattern so or you find in google so i will open this in photoshop so take a magic wand tool and select click on this black color so that means it will select the entire object and drag this one all the way to your file so now you got like this so in the object selected press ctrl t and scale down ctrl t use alt and shift and scale down so that means your object will be happen in very small and press enter so i want some particular part so i will select my polygonal lasso tool i will delete this one so i will select like this so we need to end up here and press delete in keyboard so that means you have only this object now press ctrl t and rotate like this so zoom in a little bit so see here in maya so, so right click and choose uv mode so i will select this uv so this is our top region so this is our bottom side so don't select this one so this is really we need so that means you need to keep this pattern exactly for this object so i will zoom in a little bit so i will use alt and shift and scale down so keep this object exactly over here and also you need to invert this one when the object select sorry when the layer selected press ctrl i to invert so that means it will change to white color so i want to make a multiple duplicate using alt and click and drag so like this or when the object select when the layer selected press ctrl j to duplicate and move in y so i didn't want the spot take and polygonal lasso tool and move that up to 0 pixels so you need to select this region over here and press delete so now you got like this so select all the patterns over here so i will select all the second layer using ctrl press ctrl plus e in keyboard to merge this layer so see here so when the layer selected you need to give some blur in edge so go to filter blur and choose gaussian blur and give number of radius to 0 0.1 it's enough and click ok now hide this wireframe layer over here now i will zoom out using ctrl minus so see here now i need to save this file so hide the wireframe so it's really important and go to file and choose save as go to your destination folder 
in source images so as a targo file object underscore so this is bump map so i will use bump.tga and click save and go to file and choose save as in images folder you need to save as photoshop file for your future editing so i will use object underscore bump as a photoshop file and click save and click ok so now open maya ok i will close my uv editor right click and choose object mode so and i will select my object and move a little bit in z to make it center of grid so press 3 in keyboard to smooth our object so before we applying material we need to set our camera view it's really important so click spacebar in keyboard that means you got and four viewports here i need to set my camera view so i will click and drag over here so that means you got only two viewports go to rendering and click on create cam it will automatically create it in center of grid press r and scale b when the camera selected go to panels post for two and choose camera one and you need to adjust our camera view so here you need to choose two things go to view camera settings and choose over scan view camera settings and choose resolution gate so i will zoom in so i will angle a little bit you able to see our patterns so and then i will create and polyplane and press r and scale b like this i didn't want any subdivision when the polyplane selected go to attributes and give subdivision width and height to one now we need to set my sky dome light go to arnold light and choose sky dome light it will create over here now go to Arnold and choose Arnold render view. So in default it will be render our perspective shape. I need to render my camera view. So click on here and choose camera shape one. So it will render our camera. So see here our sky dome will be created. So here you need to apply an HDR map. It's really important for our reflection. So I will provide the link below the description box. Please download the HDR map. So after you download you copy this one or if you have your own HDRI map use that one so I will provide the link below the description box copy this HDRI map and paste in your destination folder in this case I will paste in my source images already so after you paste over there you need to assign new material for this object select this object right click and choose assign new material and choose Arnold the AI standard and you I didn't want any diffuse contribution so right click and choose material attributes so I didn't want any diffuse contribution so I will go my Arnold the AI standard so or clear this history so when the object selected go to edit delete by type and choose history so now you able to find our AI standard one so I didn't want any diffuse contribution so I will drag my all the way to black I didn't want any diffuse weight and also we need to give an specular weight to one so that means you able to see our reflection before that you need to apply an HDRI map for sky dome so in the sky dome selected click on this checker color checker and go to file and choose filter type to off and click on this image name folder it automatically go to your source images in destination folder choose this HDRI map and click open so select the sky dome and give resolution to 3000 pixels so this is really important this is uh, depends upon our HDRI map resolution in width so if you use your own HDRI map please keep your width of your HDRI map resolution over here so in this case my HDRI map with this 3000 pixels so I will give 3000 pixel in my resolution so now select this object 
and go to AI standard one. I want to reduce this specular roughness a little bit to see our reflection clearly. So in this case, I will give 0 0.25. Okay, now we need to apply our bump map for the details. So when the object selector, go to bump mapping option box. So click on this checker and go to your file and give bump depth to 0 0.1, it's enough. So if you want more, we will give it later. So I will give 0 0.1 and click on this arrow and click on this filter type to off and click on this image folder it automatically go to your destination folder in this time you need to choose an bumpmap.tg as we did earlier in photoshop and click open so now i will close my arnold render view and open it again sometimes it will won't update okay now you able to see our bump map but our lighting is really high so if you have huge lighting over here you will able to reduce this one so now you able to see it clearly so i will zoom in so see here so if you want to reduce this bump value so i will select this object and click on this bump arrow so and Click on this little arrow, so give bump depth to 0 0.05 and press enter. Okay, it's perfect, but here we have a lot of noise. If you want to reduce the noise, select the HDRI map and give samples to 5 or 6 pixels, sorry, 6 samples to clear our noise. So I will give, I will select my sky dome and give samples to 6, but it will take huge render time, so I will pause my video and come back again okay it's render completed now you able to see it will reduce lot of noise and also you able to see you will achieve perfect bump map so utilizing photoshop so if you like this video give thumbs up button if you have any suggestion about this video give comment below this comment box i hope you like it i see you on next project Click subscribe button to subscribe our YouTube channel. We always need your support to create high quality content further. So please subscribe. Click here to also watch the tutorial of how to model a complex shape in Maya 2017 part 15.